In today's tutorial, we're going to work on the Crochet Family Moccasins. This is five sizes, all within one pattern. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to work on the Crochet Family Moccasins and this is a great little pattern and there's five different sizes available. Inside this pattern you'll see different colors and we'll talk about that as well. So it starts off with shoe sizes three to four in the children's range going all the way to adults of 11 to 12. These sizes are all in women's shoe sizes. So just be compensating for that. If you're doing a men's size you just got to make sure that you do the conversion of that as well. So I'm a size eight men. So that makes me a size 10 ladies. So that just uh, I just have to use then the large then in order to do that. So you just gotta make sure that you are compensating for that. Let me tell you a little bit more about this pattern and then we're gonna get into teaching all sizes available in today's pattern. So like all patterns that Yarnspiration does, they have different color codes when there's different sizes in a pattern. So you see that here's all the sizes. So this is the yarn that they're asking for you to do. So this is the nice thing about this. This does not take up a lot of yarn but this is the Bernat Softy Chunky here and it is 100 grams or three and a half ounces whichever measurement you prefer. And then you can see in the extra small it's just one ball that you need and this does both, both of them. Okay so it's one ball that does both and it's except for the large and the extra large you need two balls in order to compensate. Of course it's a bigger slipper. Then you're gonna need Bernat Pipsqueak. Now you don't need a big ball like I'm about to show you. This is the big size format but this is Pipsqueak. It's fuzzy, it's fun and I just using white on mine. So you can have a lot of fun with that and you can find these in most retailers as well. So let's uh, dive a little more into this pattern and let's see what else you're gonna get into today. So as we look closer at the pattern you'll see that there is different colors and I've already pointed those out. So whenever you're working on a certain size you want to concentrate on those numbers. So for example right here in the sole it says chain 11, 13, 15, 17 or 19. Which one are you gonna do? You're gonna do the color that matches the one that you want to do. So I did the medium off camera just to make sure I understood this pattern. So my medium was in your green color and what I decided to do is that I went through the pattern and I highlighted every one that was in green with this marker so that I never miss every time there's a decision to be made. So whenever it tells you that there needs to be a decision then it's going to give you a different digit. So this pattern you have to follow along if you're doing anything other than medium. I am gonna show the medium size today but you you just have to follow these along. But there's also an easier way to be able to follow along as well and that's the crochet diagrams that are available on page number two. Let's look at those. So on page number two there's two diagrams. Don't worry about my handwritten notes. These are me checking off the, the rounds as I went along. And so what I had today is that you got the sole is extra small and the sole is size small. Can you tell me the difference between these two of them? And if you're not sure the secret is actually is that it's the distance of this middle. So the this is just showing you see how it's turning around and going around here. It's exactly the same that's happening here. So the only difference between this one here and this one is the distance of these these single crochet right in the middle. So let me tell you a little bit more about that. I blew it up and I'm gonna talk about that next. So here's a blown up version of the diagram. So what you want to pay attention to is the turning radius over here and over here. So we're going to start here right at the slip knot here our slip stitch and then we're going to start and then we're going to turn the corner and whip it right back around. I'm going to show you a very easy way to be able to do that without all this excessive counting. Now these that you saw in the pattern are available and they're all the same on the outside turn here all the way in extra small, small, medium. Okay, so three sizes all have the same radius going all the way around. Okay, and so you just can ignore this middle section here because it just the sizes of extra small, small and medium. There's just more single crochets to make it longer. That's it. So what about large, extra large? Let me show you that and then I'm gonna come back to this. So this diagram and I'm gonna put both diagrams available on the Crochet Crowd uh, website for this particular pattern. So what happens on the large and extra large is that there's an extra revolution of getting bigger and so what I've done is that I just deleted the last round that was in there that was in the other diagram and I show how it's expanding. So the next round, round number six that it's asking you to do, see it's it's telling you to do two here and I've just laid it out for you. So don't worry about what's 
the distance over here. Okay, don't worry about that. You're only worrying about the radius going all the way around and keeping it consistent. So you'll see over here, you'll see where it starts to branch off to get a little bit bigger and I show you exactly where it is. So I show you that there's branches of this fluorescent color going all, all the way um, on the turns. What does that exactly mean? Well let me show you that consistency because we're gonna be using that in today's tutorial as your marker instead of having to count excessively all the time. So coming back to my other sheet and both sheets are similar other than see this has a different round right here and the other one what I did is that I just showed you it one more round in round number six and then it shows a very similar round to what you see here. So you're gonna see these branching off of fluorescent colors. So what this is is showing you like the veins or maybe even the slices of pie if you want to call it and every time that the pattern has you branching off. So for example we have a single crochet but the next time we come into that single crochet it branches off. See that there's two. The next time you're doing this same one here it branches off. There's two. It branches off those two. So what I did is that I highlighted all the line to show you where all the branching is happening and because of that it makes it a lot more easier to follow. So in order to do this and if you did the hot dog snuggle sack with me we did the same concept. So you can count all of these stitches because this will be different on all the sizes but if you're strategic with your stitch marker and place a stitch marker in the first one that turns you don't have to count all this. You just gotta look for it and that's where you're gonna put the double every time you go to do it. So there's more branches just to show you that where they're branching but you don't need to put stitch markers there and then you should put a stitch marker in this branch over here because this branch again is branching off. So after you follow the set of instructions just like you see over here you'll come back but instead of having to count all these and get find this one again. If you mark it with a stitch marker you can just rely on that and get it accurate each and every time and that just makes a whole lot of sense. So you wanna move your stitch markers whether it's this size or the other size in this spot here just before you come back in and the first time that you're gonna hit it and if I show you the sample that I worked on this is exactly what you saw over here. So this is the back of the shoe over here. Obviously I stepped on something and what we have here is that you can see that the marker is coming out and then here this is the marker. So if you're comparing the two this over here is right here and this one over here is right here and because of that I was able to keep it completely in balance just like that. So as we begin to start this pattern today you're going to all start off with different chains depending on what size that you're working on. I'm gonna do the size medium. So just remember that the ends are always gonna be the same all the way for extra small, small and medium and you're gonna follow this but if you're doing the large or extra large you're gonna follow the same thing. The only difference is that I applied and show you where the rest of these are and you can print these off and mark this sheet up if you want to and because of it it will make it a lot easier for you to be able to follow. So I wanna show you a couple more things. I highlighted in blue where those two pieces are. So once we get all the way done to this round, okay the outside rounds that we are gonna start working on here and we're gonna be putting stitches together. You can see it over here as well. If you mark these two, these are the absolute center point of the slipper. So if I'm looking at the thing here right here, this piece here is added on afterward but sometimes it's hard to get a hold of that and see exactly where it is. So what you wanna do is you wanna mark your two stitches before um, doing this area so that you know exactly where this is in the center point. The first time I ever put this together I was off by two stitches and the whole um, um, slipper was malfunctioning and because it was malfunctioning I just didn't get the center point. So I think it's helpful for you in the very last time and we'll cover this as we come is that if you mark those two you'll have the center point of your slipper so that you can get that right each and every time. So final words when you're starting this just highlight the numbers that you want to work with today and you can follow these set of instructions and the diagram is working for all of the sizes except for um, large and extra large then you have to use the one that I made here in order to get round number six here before continuing. So there's only a difference of one extra round for doing the uh, large or extra large. So let's begin. Let's grab our uh, size six millimeter size J crochet hook today and then let's grab our Bernat Softy Chunky and let's get going. 
So as we begin our first chain what we're gonna do is that we're gonna start off and we're gonna chain. So we're gonna start here and then what we're gonna do is then on round number one we're gonna come up and we're gonna come back, circle around that chain and come on the opposite side of the chain and circle back. So just as one of those really interesting ones that we have to establish the first turn and we're gonna do that here as we start to chain and do round number one. Make sure you also have two stitch markers available to you, just spare string and those will help you to keep everything in balance. So as I already stated I'm doing the size medium today and I'm gonna maintain that so I have a pair. So what I'm gonna do here is it says chain 15. If you're doing the other size just look what the number is on the pattern and do that chain number instead. So let's chain 15. So just uh, continue. Remember the first one never counts as one. So one, two, three, four and five and go all the way to the number you want. In my case it'll be 15. So let's begin working along the center chain. So let's begin and we're going to just start second chain from the hook. So just count back. So one and two, turn it over, get the back loop only of the chain. It just makes it easier and just single crochet. So you're gonna do that one. So you don't have to count. You can just go all the way to the end of the chain that you have on your, uh, have going on right now. But the very last stitch you need to put in three single crochets to make that revolution turn around. You're gonna notice that this will grow really quickly because this is bulky yarn and it's gonna turn out really quite fabulous. So I'll meet you at the end of this uh, this row here. So I'll meet you on this side here. I'll show you how to place your stitch marker because now's the time and then I'll show you what to do from that point. So I'm coming up to the end of the chain and I only have one more. So the last chain that we have is that I have to put in three single crochets. So watch. So put in one, okay, and then put in two, and put in three. Now I want you to stop right here. I want you to place your stitch marker in the third one. So just count back. So one, two, and three and just insert your hook underneath and grab a stitch marker and pull that through. So whenever you come back now this will be the starting revolution of the starting branch. Instead of you having to count all these coming back this will be where it will happen. So now can just put this back on the hook and come down the opposite side. So just working your way down the opposite side of the chain. Okay, so just turn, I just turned it upside down. I'm putting the straggler down in the middle so that it gets stuck underneath and I'm single crocheting myself all the way back. Now the very final chain is only gonna have two single crochets. Why do you think there's only two in there and not three? Well the we started off with putting one single crochet second chain from the hook that is your one there and so by coming to the end of the chain and adding two you eventually get your three that you need in order to do the revolution around. So that's why you would do that. So I'm just coming up all the way to the end. Well pretty close to it. I'm just gonna move the straggler out of the way. It's buried enough for me to be satisfied. And I'm just continuing just like that. And this is the very last one. So this one here I'm gonna place in two single crochets. So one and two and I wanna join it to the top first one right here. Okay so that is your three all working together. So before you continue just take this out and count the second one back. So one and two that is your stitch marker then for this side of your, your work. So now you can just do your magic over here and then you don't have to count. You can look for the stitch marker and then just keep moving that as we go. So that's how you do the round number one. So I have my stitch markers in place and now I'm ready to move on to round number two. So I'm back on round number two. So round number two you're gonna see that we're gonna chain up one and there will be two single crochets into the first one. So that completes this revolution as it comes around and then we're just gonna keep going along and right where that stitch marker is right we're here you're gonna place in two but this time when you go to move the stitch marker you're gonna want it on this on the second one and then you're just gonna do the magic. So you just uh, every time you're just gonna put two into each one and then you're gonna zip along and come back and right where the stitch marker is you're gonna put in two and then again move up that stitch marker and then zip around. So let's begin round number two. So let's begin round number two. So we're gonna chain up one. So essentially in round number two each one of the three that we did in the end is all gonna have two single crochets when you boil that all down. So the very first one that we're gonna have is that it's gonna be two single crochets in there. So that is the finishing of the revolution uh, when you come all the way back around. And now you're just gonna zip along and you can count if you want to but I don't see the point to. If you got your stitch markers in you can save a ton of time and just use the visual cue of the stitch marker. 
and you're just gonna move along until you run into that next stitch marker that you did. Chances are if you're following today's video you're gonna use this concept. So if you would like the actual count you can just refer to it on the pattern that's been provided to you and the more information of this video. So I'm looking for where that first stitch marker is so I know where that, that branch is where it's gonna start turning off. So here's, here it is now. So this one's gonna have two single crochets but watch what I do. So I put one and two and before I go any further I wanna move the stitch marker to the last one that was just in there. Okay so that's the second one of the two and if you look at the diagram and follow my fluorescent up that's exactly where you wanna put it. So the next two single crochets that you have are going to be um, two into each. Okay, so two, the next two stitches are two single crochets each. So one and two. And then the next one is one and two. See, and now you've got your stitch marker ready for the next time you come back across. And now you're just gonna zip down, on down the line. Now back to the other side. You can use cues like this. I, I'm a huge advocate of trying to simplify the process, trying to make it easier for you. Nobody wants to sit in front of a television and count and you got people running all over the place and TV is quite interesting. So if you can look for visual cues and actually implement them, you'll make yourself a lot quicker. So I'm gonna run into the next stitch marker real soon which is next. And so in that one there in round number two it's gonna be two single crochets. So one and two and remember you have to move that stitch marker and it's gonna be the, the, the second one you did. So it's the first one back from underneath the loop. Move that stitch marker up so just you'll have a line then trace trailing up. So that's one of two. The next one is gonna have two single crochets. And remember how we started that we started off with two single crochets right away. So then this you're just gonna join to the first single crochet. So essentially you have your two, two and two. So that concludes round number two. So round number three we're gonna start off. So what's gonna happen as we go on you see that these branches out get further apart from each other and they're single crochets that fill them in. So in round number three when we go to start is that there's gonna be one single crochet by itself and then there's gonna be two. And then you're gonna zip along and then right where the stitch marker is you're gonna put two and then there's one that separates it and then another two, one that separates it and another two. So it's just kind of an easy way to be able to look at this and I'm gonna have you now look at the sheet for the remainder of this area but I am going to do all the ste steps with you on camera. But you can see that there's just gonna be a difference of added single crochets between the branches when we go to do it. So let's begin round number three. So let's begin round number three. We're gonna chain up one and the, and the first one that we have where we've done the join is that there's gonna be one single crochet that sits by itself and then the next one will have two single crochets. So one and two. So now you're just gonna zip along back to the front. So right where the stitch markers are in, or sorry, right where you're doing the joining on the, on these rounds is the back of the heel. Just so that you're aware of that. The sole is completely equal as far as sizing on either side. So there's no special shaping and there's no special shaping if it's right or left either. They're both the same. So I'm looking for the visual cue then of that stitch marker that is waiting for me once I get over to this side. Just right there. So it's next. So there's gonna be two into this one and move that stitch marker up into the second one that you just did. Okay, so move that stitch marker up to the one just under the loop. And so you have that ready to go next time. This is round number three. And now next one is one single crochet by itself. The next one has two single crochets. The next one is one by itself and then the next one has two. So there's like three sections that you have to do. So there's like two by itself or two in the same one and then two and then one and two. So now you're just gonna zip along to the other side back to where you had started. So just one single into each. So you can see that I can continue to talk and just uh, not have to count uh, with you but if you want to count that's completely your business. You can save yourself a lot of time if you don't have to. I don't know. I'm one of those people I can't chew gum and walk at the same time. Don't ask me. I don't know. <laughs> okay so let's uh, continue and the, here's the stitch marker as we come back to the beginning. So the stitch marker obviously will have two in there because that's what we've, what I've got you to do. And now you're just gonna move that stitch marker up to the one right underneath it. Okay. And then there's one by itself. So the next one is by itself. And then the next one here 
the, which is the last one is gonna be two single crochets. So just watch that you don't think that this is an extra stitch here. This is just it leaning over. So and then just join it to the top just like that and that was round number three. Let's move on to round number four. So round number four we're gonna chain up one and the first two that you're gonna run into so coming right into the first one and the next one are just gonna be one single crochet by itself and then the next one has two. So one and two. So this time there's gonna be two single crochets that separate the, the groups of two. So let's just zip along now to the other side. Just going down. And these are pretty easy to do. I was so surprised on how fast it took me to do these. If I didn't have to teach it I'd probably be done this uh, bottom area right now. Not that I'm complaining I'm just saying. If I don't have to talk myself through the steps it gets quicker. So here's the stitch marker. So there's gonna be two into that one. And we're gonna move that stitch marker up again. It's the one right just before you finished. Just looking for where that is. Spare yarn comes in great handy. It's nice cheating techniques. So this time then there's gonna be two single crochets in a row and then the next one is gonna be two into the same one. So one and two and then the next two are by themselves. So one and two and then the next one is two into the same one. Okay, so now we're gonna move down the other side to where we had started. Now that you'll notice uh, on this as I'm talking to you is that the Bernat Softy Chunky actually calls for an eight millimeter size L crochet hook but we're only using a six millimeter size J. And the difference is is that the smaller hook is co uh, causing these stitches to compress and compact. So therefore it's making this nice and durable and solid as a result of using a smaller hook. Okay, so I'm looking for the stitch marker as my indication of where the next one will be. This is round number four. So then there's gonna be two right where the stitch marker is. And move that stitch marker up. Just like that. And then there's two in a row, remember that are by themselves. So one and two. And look the next stitch which is your last one is gonna be two single crochets. So one and two. And then you just join it to the top of the first single crochet to conclude round number four. So let's do round number five together. So round number five, the, what the difference is, now there's gonna be three singles that stand by themselves and then two. So let's chain up one. So the first three are gonna be one single each. One, two, and three. And then the next one will have two into this one. So as we get bigger in the, in the circle, that's what you need to do. So, I'm so right now I'm just gonna single crochet and I'm gonna cut away this video and I'm gonna meet you over here in the first uh, uh, stitch marker right there. So I'm coming over here and the stitch marker is coming right up and that one's gonna be, this is round number five. I'm gonna show you number six uh, for those that want to see that as well. So this is uh, number, this is where the stitch marker is. So there's gonna be two. Again move up that stitch marker. Just like that. Okay and then you're just gonna do three in a row that are by themselves. So one, two, and three. And then you're gonna do two into the next one. And then the next three are by themselves. So one, two, and three. And then the next one is two by themselves, or two into the same one, sorry. So now you're just gonna zip along to the first stitch marker when you come back all the way in this revolution. Okay, so I'm coming all the way to the where I've started and this is the first stitch marker then. I, I started here for you remember. And there's gonna be two into here and move up that stitch marker once again. Okay, and we're gonna use that stitch marker as an aid then in the next time we go around. And continue then there's gonna be three in a row. So one, two, and three and the very final stitch is gonna be two into the same one. So for those doing the extra small, uh, small and medium, this is where you're gonna stop at this point and I'm going to demonstrate then round number six is if it's doing a large or extra large just to make sure those people have an opportunity. So if you're doing extra small, small or medium right now, do not do the next step I'm about to show you. 
So for those doing the large to extra large you're gonna wanna follow the sheet that I provided to you with these on here and you will see then last time in round number five we had one, two and three single crochets by themselves. This time there will be four and then it will branch and then you're gonna work your way all the way to the stitch marker once again and then branch off and just like that. Okay, so I want to show you see how I turned the angle right here. I want you on round number six for those that are doing this size I want you to put your stitch marker into the first one not to the second because you're gonna use that as your opportunity to be able to compress this. So when you do two together you're gonna use that as your starting point. So once you get to uh, once you get to here and you can see this those two will come together just like that and you want to do the same with the other side then do you see where it's branching off right here you want to do the same thing right there. Okay, so let's uh, begin and let's start round number six with you and then make sure extra small, small and medium people are not doing this round. Okay, large and extra large people let's get going. We're gonna chain up one and then we're just gonna put one into the first one and to the next three. So there's gonna be four by itself. So this is two, three and four and then coming into the, the last, the next one is gonna be two into the same one. So now you're just gonna zip along with single crochets all the way until you get to the stitch marker over here and I'll see you there in just a moment. Remember this is only large and extra large people only. So I'm coming up near to where the stitch marker is. Okay, so there's the stitch marker we're gonna put in two but watch what we're gonna do slightly differently if you remember what I just said. So it's not gonna be the one you just did, it's the one second back and it's gonna be that's where the stitch marker is and this will give you an indication uh, where you have to do the next um, line around or the next round. So now there's gonna be four into the, uh, sorry, one into the next four. So one, two, three and four and then the next one has two. So one and two and the next one has four. So our, uh, there's four into the, uh, one into the next four. So one and two, three and four and then two into the next one. Okay and now you're just gonna continue now to single crochet all the way to back to where you started. Okay and this is the first stitch marker here. I'll see you there in just a moment. So I'm just coming back to the where the stitch marker is. Again this is large extra large size only and right where the stitch marker is I want you to uh, put in two and this time for the stitch marker I want you to put in um, the stitch marker into the second one. Okay so the one you just finished right there. I've got that indicated on the sheet as well. And put this back on. So there's two into that one and so the next four will be by itself. So one, two, three and four and you got one stitch left and there's gonna be two into that one. So this is uh, the conclu conclusion then of this round, round number six for large and extra large. I'm going to continue one more round which is the compression round which is then going to make the bottom of the sole and this is only for large and extra large size and then what we're gonna do then after that is go back to the uh, extra small, medium or small and medium. So back on the sheet here you're going to notice a plus sign with a cursive underneath it and this means that it's gonna be in the back loops only. So this is gonna create the sole shape in this round. But you know what you gotta watch this round because you're gonna notice that in this uh, quadrant over here in the upper quadrant there's gonna be three stitches that come together. This cause compression and then you're gonna notice that there's gonna be three over here as well and right where I put the stitch markers that's where an indication of where you need to do it. So you don't see any compression happening here or here it's only in this one and over here. So it's like diagonal to each other. So when we do these single crochets we're only gonna work in the back loops only to create that nice shell shape but then we, we have to pay attention to the first stitch marker. So let's do this round. Uh, first and then I will carry you forward. Okay so for large and extra large only you're going to chain up one and into the same one that you did you're only gonna go into a back loop. So if you're new to crochet see how there's two strands. Okay if you only go into one strand and it's the closest to you that's the front loop and if you go into the one that is furthest to you it's the back loop. So what you wanna do is just come straight down and go into a back loop only and you can count but why bother if you've got those stitch markers working for you. So you're just gonna continue in the back loops one single crochet until you get to that first stitch marker area that I'm gonna show you what to do. And you're gonna notice that it's gonna create a line but this causes the, the slipper to have a, a significant bend right at the bottom of the sole that gives you that, that 
classic look of a shoe. So you're just gonna single crochet into the bottom or sorry back loop and I'm going to meet you at the first stitch marker in a second. So the stitch marker is actually two stitches away and if you looked at my diagram I had you put the stitch marker in and the first one of the two. Do you remember that? So and if you look at it there's two stitches that come together and this is the second stitch of the two. So these two are gonna come together this time. So in order to do that you're just gonna wrap or you're not gonna wrap the hook. You're just gonna go into the back loop of the next stitch pull the yarn through and hold it and then go into the next stitch just in the back loop only and pull through and hold it. You now have three loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through all three. Two just became one. I need you to do that two more times. So come into the next one that's available to you. Pull through and the next one. Pull through and then pull through all three loops. So that's two of three that you need to do. Come into the next one same thing and next one same thing pull through all three. So now you're gonna notice it's gonna compress. So now you're just gonna go continue now to the back loops until you get to the next stitch marker which comes around and you're gonna notice that this is gonna start bowling in on you because this is just the way it operates and continue in the back loops only. Single crochet till the next stitch marker and I'll show you what to do from that point. And as you come around to where we started you're gonna run into the next stitch marker. So in this side this one plus its friend is gonna be together. So go into that one where the stitch marker is, pull through, go into its friend, pull through, pull through all three. Do the next two the same way. So two together, pull through and then do the next two. So now you have your three that are by itself or three that have now just come together. You have only one stitch left and that's gonna be by itself of a single crochet and then you just join it to the top of the first single uh, crochet that you have. So this concludes then how to do the large and extra large size. You're gonna see that there's gonna be a bend and that will be more obvious but this is the size here. So if your foot does not fit comfortably in this right at this time and if it's way too stretched you know yet you're doing the wrong size at this time. So this is a really good way. So the only difference then of large and extra large is that large is slightly smaller and large and extra large would be slightly wide or longer and but you would still have the same turns here. So at this time we're gonna go back uh, for uh, to go get our friends in this uh, extra small, small and medium in order to show them how to get to this point. So for those that are working on the extra small to small or medium I've just now ripped out my stitches to bring you back to where you, we left you. Okay so the uh, where we just were were only for the large and extra large size. So let's bring you back to the diagram. This is uh, row number five just, just finished here and we're gonna then show you how to do the next round which is gonna start doing the compression round. So in the next round what we're gonna do is that we're gonna chain up and you're going to do, do you see these cursive things right here? That means it's a back loop so I'm gonna show you that in just a moment. You're gonna notice that they're gonna do some compression of three uh, two together stitches over here and then they're gonna appear over here. So what I want you to do is that I want you to look for that because you don't see it up here or here. So the compression is only happening on one quadrant over here and one quadrant over here and hopefully that makes sense to you. So where I had you move the stitch marker I want you to look for that because this one here the second one is gonna be into two together. So you don't need to count you just gotta look for that and then just do your, your three in a row and then continue around and right where you have the stitch marker over here the second one of the two is going to be together just like that. Okay so let's uh, begin to do that. Let me show you what the back loops are and let's get you started on this round. So in this round we're gonna then start the back loops which creates the look of the sole. Okay so let's begin. We're gonna chain up one. So if you're new to crochet there's always two strands. Now if you go into both it's a stitch but if you go to the first one only it's a front loop and if you go into the back one only it's a back loop. So in order to create the sole shape we have to create go into the back loop only to create like a 90 degree really hard turn. So coming straight down underneath just want to go into the back loop only and single crochet. So I want you to single crochet just one into each until you hit that first stitch marker. I'm gonna meet you um, just uh, probably a couple stitches before that point and show you how to put those together and we're gonna just single crochet um, continuous. So do you see it's creating a line now? This creates a bend which creates then the lift up for the side of the sole. So let's uh, meet you at the first stitch marker. So I'm now two stitches away from this stitch marker. So one and two. If you look at the diagram the second where the stitch marker is is the second one of the two. So I wanna put these two together. So just going in and pull through and then go into the next one and pull through. You got three loops. You're gonna pull through all three. 
So that just became two together. So you gotta do this two more times. So into the next one, pull through. The next one after that, pull through. Pull through all three. And then do it one more time. So that, pull through. And that, pull through. Okay, and then just like that. So now you got three in, in a row that were together and now you're just gonna continue to back loop single crochet until you get close to the other stitch marker on the other side and you're gonna notice that this is gonna start bending in quite significantly. You can see it's already happening to me and that's creating, that's exactly what you want because now you're gonna start going up the side of the sole. So let's uh, continue and I'll see you at the next stitch marker. So I'm coming up to the next one here. This is the stitch marker. So in the instructions you will see that where the stitch marker is plus the friend before it is gonna become two together. So just going into the next one, pull through and then this one has the stitch marker, pull through and then pull through all three. Do that again, one and two. Okay, and then do it again. Okay, and you're left with one stitch which is right and that's just gonna be one single crochet in the back loop only. So then you're just going to join it then to the top of the first single crochet that you started with. So that concludes on how to do the sole area and you just gotta plop it like this, turn it in so that the right side is facing out and down. Okay, and you will notice it will create like a boat shape. But what we need to do now before we continue even for the extra large size we need to locate the middle one right now. Before we move on in today's tutorial I need you to mark the center points of these, these soles. They're harder to locate later. So what I want you to do is that do you see where you have these are two together. This is in the, the extra large, large to extra large. See where it's two together and then one by itself. I want you to mark those two with a stitch marker. That's the middle of the front of the foot. For the other size for extra small, small and medium again same spot. Mark those two. So what I want to do right where I did the slip stitch right at the end. Okay just come to the opposite side. You can pull out the stitch marker now and just look at it from a head on point of view. Okay and if you wanna look at it from a straight down point of view that's up to you. And what you wanna do is that these two right here in the middle are your stitch markers. So what I'm gonna do is just put a string in both sides and so when I'm ready to do this and I need to locate the center of the shoe I can look at that and say yeah that's the center because I can confirm that as of right now. You can take out the other stitch marker that is currently in the back and we can then move on and start the rest of this shoe or the slipper. So for all sizes now what we're gonna do, remember we were working on it like this so I flipped it. So now the right side is facing down. So this is the inside where your foot will sit. So what I wanna do now is the next two rounds, this is true for um, all sizes. You're gonna chain up one and you're just gonna do one single crochet into each stitch. Please do that for two rounds and what this is gonna do is gonna build up the side of the shoe or the side of the slipper. It looks like a shoe to me, that's why I keep calling it a shoe, like a penny loafer or something. So okay, so just go all the way around and I'll meet you at the end of this revolution and do it once again with you. As you go around, I haven't gone around all the way wet but I'm now hitting the front of the shoe. Do you see where we put the stitch markers? Just ignore those. Just pretend that you don't even see them. Just go right over them. Okay, just don't get them stuck in your stitches by grabbing a ply or anything. Just leave them right where they are. They just are a marker for you for the future. So continue just to go all the way around single crochet. So I'm coming around to the back of the shoe or the back of the slipper and I'm just going one single crochet into each Remember that that's not a stitch here. That's part of this first one here and we wanna slip stitch to the beginning just like that. Okay and let's do one more round. So just chain up one, one single crochet into each again all the way around for round number two. And I won't stop midway. I'll see you at the end of this round. I'm coming up to the very final stitch here and don't remember, don't forget that's not a stitch here. Okay it looks like it is but it's not. It's part of that first one. You'll add an extra stitch if you think that it is. So just watch that and you're just gonna join with a slip stitch. So now you've got like a boat shape going on and now you're done. So what you need to do is then fasten off this yarn. So let's trim our yarn and let me show you what to do. You don't wanna fasten it off nicely. You don't wanna do a hack job on that. So just pulling it through and I want you to grab a darning needle. Because you are gonna be wearing this or somebody you love is gonna wear them you wanna make sure that you take extra precaution for these tails. So just insert them into a darning needle just like this. And if you put your work in so that it goes through the stitches um, three times back and forth you'll never have them falling out. So just coming in and just gliding up underneath the stitches. So don't impede that top edge at all because that's gonna be visible 
to you. It actually won't be actually with these particular designs but usually it is. So it's just gonna be going across. So go one, going back in the other direction through a different path, different set of fibers for two. And then finally, just I wanna grab that before it falls off. So this is two and then finally just come back in the other direction for three. Just wanna take your time and get them in. So what you can do because you've gone back now three times back and forth, you can trim it right down to the project. You don't ever have to worry about that falling out on you. Just like that. So here's your boat shape and now this indicates the front of your shoe and now we're about to start something absolutely new. So let's begin to try and do that next. So we're now beginning to do this part of the tutorial. So this is a top piece that is done afterward as a single crochet round to create that lip that you see in the model's foot. So what we want to do is that each size has a different size. So we have a different chains depending on the size and I want you to look at the pattern for that. It's either nine, 10 or 11. And we're gonna go back and forth for a certain amount and then we're gonna start decreasing as we get to then to the toe. This is a piece that's done afterward and then we have to apply it to this, um, to the actual slipper here. We have to apply it and right where I had you do the, the front here is where the front of this piece will sit. So what I want you to do then is that I want you to pay attention to what we're about to do next. So let's put the slipper away for a second and let's do the top piece. So I did the medium. In my case it's chain 10. So if you have a different size then you'll have to do a different size then of chain. So we're just gonna chain and let's begin. This is so simple it's gonna go quick on you. So it's gonna go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. So row number one, it's one single crochet, second chain from the hook and a single crochet in each. So go one and two, second back and you wanna turn it over and get the back loop only and you're gonna single crochet yourself across this chain. Okay, so do that and I'll see you back on the other side. So now that I'm on the other side of the chain, I just wanna turn my work and do row number two. So row number two is just chain up one and it's one single into each. So the remaining of the rows that we have to do depend on the size that you have and those are in the instructions. So you're either gonna have to repeat four times, five, six, seven or eight and all this is, it's actually telling you how deep your uh, top is to where it's gonna grow up. Okay, in actual fact you're starting up here and working your down and then you're gonna taper in. So that's what those repeat uh, rows are. So in my case I have to repeat a total of six times after I get this row number two done. So I just gotta do a cross here and then just turn my work and do six rows of just single crochet back and forth. So I'm gonna have you look at the pattern and do how many rows that you need to do and so you just have to repeat it either four, five, six, seven or eight times. And I will see you back here after I get six. So I'm now back and I had repeated my rows six times. Okay, so you have a total there and it's actually not hard to do. So depending on what size you did, if you were doing a smaller size, this will be shorter and if you're doing a larger size, this will be longer. Okay, it obviously it makes sense. So now we're gonna move to the next row. So the next row is about doing the point towards the top. So it's gonna start pointing in and this is where it's gonna lead then to the top of the slipper if you're looking at it. So we're gonna do the point uh, coming in and we're gonna start decreasing stitches in order to do that. So to do that, let's uh, just uh, begin and I'm gonna show you the row and then you have to repeat it uh, the number of times that it states. So we're going to then chain up one and the first two are gonna be to come together. So the first two stitches going in, pull through and in, pull through. Okay, so that you want the first stitch and the second stitch, pull through all three like so. Now you're just gonna single crochet yourself until you get to the final two stitches. So do you hear me counting? No, you don't really need to count because all you just need to do is just look for the last two. So one and two and put those two together. Just like that. Okay, so now it says, now that we've done that, it says repeat this, um, the last row and then it says the number of times. So it's either two, two, three or four. So for the medium it was three. So I'm just gonna turn my work and just continue. So chain up one, the first two become together just like that and then you just co carry on just one into each and then the final two is going to be together and it's gonna really come in on you real quick just like that. So that was one of three. Turn our work, chain one, 
first two are together just like that and then you just keep single crocheting across until you run into the next two which happens to be the next two right there. Okay so this was two or three turn our work again chain up one put the first two together and you're left with one stitch left and that's just one single crochet by itself like that. So do you see the point? Just like that. So what I want to do is that I want to fasten this off and you think I'm gonna use a nice uh, darning needle to sew that in? You bet your boots I am. So what I want to do is that I not only want to do this one here really nicely but I want to do this one as well. So using the technique I've already showed you put it onto the darning needle hide in those ends because this here is then going to go on the top of the shoe and if you have it nice and woven in and out of the way it'll look a lot better and easier to make. So right now I'm at the point where I have the top piece done. If I were you and you were me I would do these as a pair. So for example I would have done both soles at the same time and then I would do two of these at the same time and then put them together at the same time and then do the white fluff. That's what I would do because you can guarantee that if you put one of these in here you can count the number of stitches because once you put this fluff in you're not going to be able to count your stitches at all in order to get it to be accurate. So what you want to do is that you want to use some stitch markers then is to hold it and remember that we had the first part here. Well those two stitches here I'm going to use that as my advantage and I'm just going to pull those up. So I'm just going to pull them straight up. So it's almost like the green uh, friendly giant just goes straight up way up. I don't know if that's a Canadian show or not but I remember it as a kid. So I'm going to go up way up like this. Okay so now I still have my center point. It's pretty close to it to call it the center point. And what I want to do is that I want to place there's three stitches remember at the very uh, in front of this. So what I want to do is just insert my hook in and pull that one stitch marker through like that and I want to pull the other one through on the other one. So this is the second one of the, of the two. These stitch markers at this point are going to save you in order for you to have to rip apart your slipper like I did. So if something is going wrong you're going to see it right now. And what I would do is just tie this into a bow. It just is going to hold it from uh, taking off on you. I tried doing other ways and uh, it was just coming apart on me. So now you have the first part in. So what you want to do is just turn it sideways and just kind of eye it up. Okay and this is why I would do both of these at the same time and because you could actually do a pair like this and then all of a sudden you realize that they're not equal to each other. So, okay. So you would what I would do is probably just look at look it up here and just kind of match it. So with the extra stitch markers coming into the top of there and just kind of eyeing it up getting it as close as you can to being perfect. Just count your stitches if you have to. And what I would do is count your stitches once you do one. I would count your stitches uh, in the back section. So I would count around the back here. So do one and tie it into a bow. Again if you keep it relatively snug it's just easier to keep this all in balance in the next round. And then do the other side. So just kind of eyeing it up straight across. So going in and straight across. So now that I'm doing this and tying it if it looks deformed in any way you're going to be able to tell right away and you can move your stitch markers now if you have to. Okay so this is going to hold it down for you when you go to go around it. So that's kind of what it looks like at this point. Okay so what I want to do now is that I want to start the next revolution. We're going to start right in the back and go around but we're going to create this lip as we do that as we come around the front and then come back around to the other side. So let's do that round next. Starting on the back of the slipper I want to create a slip knot and I want to begin and go right into the very back. Okay right into the back straight back and I want you to join the yarn and then chain up one and one single into the same stitch. I want you to keep the straggler down on top of the line so that it can get stuck underneath and I want you just to single crochet into every stitch that you hit. 
Now right where you've done that tie here that's when we're gonna do something slightly different. We're gonna go between this layer and the top layer and attach both of them together at the same time with the single crochet. And that's what gives it that characteristic lip right at the very front of the of this slipper. So I'm just burying that loose end as I go. Gets it out of the way and out of sight. So I'm just continuing along just one in, uh, um, single crochet into each. And the next one here I'm looking at it see so I was kind of one off so I'm gonna go into the very first one. Okay so this is the back of the sole. Do You see that? And then I wanna go into the top of the shoe. The top uh, area. Okay and I want to pull the yarn through. So I'm getting both of them into position and then single crochet them together. Once you have that in you can take out that stitch marker to be out of your way. So don't take them all out just take out that first one. And now you're just gonna continue to move around into each stitch. And the goal is, is just sandwiching them together to create that look. Um, the trick is not to get, um, make sure that you get all the plies that you need to get. Like I just grabbed something I shouldn't have grabbed. You always know when you can, when you have extra stuff on your hook you can feel the te added tension to it. Okay so let's take a look at the top of my work here. So you can see, see it's creating that look. So I'm just moving around on the stitches that are on the side of the sole and just matching it to the top of that uh, top piece there. And I'm gonna be hitting a stitch marker real soon. This will be the very, um, the front. Now all the sizes are done in this. I didn't say that but I pretty much assumed that you would know that. Okay so I'm just continuing to go around. Okay and then here's see there's the next stitch marker there and it's buddy. So what I'm gonna do is just go in there and you're gonna take this out to get that out of my way. So the two front are now in the front and what I wanna do before I carry on is that I wanna make sure that's tr still true. Okay so I'm looking at it. Okay so that it's at the halfway point. Do you see that? And now I wanna continue around the other side. So just continuing along and just moving across. So this is not a very hard part. I guess the trick is to make sure because you got two of them you want them to be equal. So you just gotta, I would do it in like an assembly line that, like they're making shoes uh, to make sure that each of the steps are equal to each other and the same size. Therefore you don't end up with a, a slipper where one's bigger than the other. I've uh, been known to do that more than once let me tell you. Especially on kids uh, booties. Especially if you miss one stitch it's amazing the difference it can make. So I'm coming up to the end here and this is the final one here. But we're not done going all the way around even though we've only secured that top. Remember we didn't start here. We started on the back. So now I'm just letting it go. Okay do you see that? So now I'm just working along the back here. And I just want to join it then to the first single crochet that I did and then you're going to fasten off once again and you're going to weave in your ends and get that all nice and done. And we're getting close to actually being done. That's kind of the nice thing about it too. It's pretty quick. Okay and coming right into the last one. I got one more stitch to do. And then just join it. So before you fasten off make sure that your shoe looks like it's gonna be lined up properly. Uh, the first time I ever did it I was off in the front by a little bit and I realized that this was actually kind of a, uh, a jar a little bit. So I'm going to fasten this off. I'm gonna weave in my ends and then we're gonna begin the next part which is the fluff. So let's move on to doing the cuff. Now the cuff is actually really quite interesting. This is the second time that I've had to film this. Um, the video was actually released and then there was a pattern change but it was such a big change that I couldn't leave the video up. 
So what we have here is that we have to apply the cuff and originally the cuff came from the top and down and then from the top down into the inside but now it's been revised so that it now comes up from the bottom of the sole up and over and inside and if you look at the models uh, that way she's wearing it you know that's true. So let's uh, grab our pipsqueak yarn today and uh, we're going to uh, then apply the cuff and uh, this is actually really quite easy and you'll see that it, it works out pretty quickly as well. So let's uh, begin and grab your six millimeter size J crochet hook today in order to do this. So put the yarn on your hook with a slip knot just like so and now we're going to then look at this uh, the slipper here the moccasin. So what I want you to do is follow it straight across and then down okay and I want you to go to the front loop so just follow it so just look where it stops and follow it down and right here see this line here these are your front loops of your work. So following it straight down and you can just choose one. So there we go. So don't get the same one in there. Just shift over one and come over like so and insert into the front loop. So what I want you to do is just fasten on the yarn. So just pulling it through. Now pip squeak is a bit of a challenge to work with. I'm not gonna deny that. So it'll take you a little bit getting used to if you've never worked with it before. I just pull it through as a fasten on. So using this straggler here you want to kind of bury it in. So what you wanna do is that you wanna work along these, these front loops here down in the sole and you're going to single crochet. So leave this down on top of it so it gets stuck underneath. And if you're experienced to crochet this is not gonna be a big deal. So what you're gonna do here is that you're going to work uh, all the way around until you get to the other side of where it stops. So you're gonna follow it across and then you're gonna stop when you get to the other side over here. So just single crochet yourself along the bottom of the front loops of the sole here area and I'll meet you back here in just a moment. So I'm coming up all the way around you can see that a trace and what I wanna do is kinda look straight across because that's where it should be on the other side as well. So I'm gonna go one more and that's it. Okay so it kinda looks like a horseshoe at this point. So you're gonna turn your work and now all you're just gonna do is work in the rows back and forth to it gets about four inches. So this is gonna build up and it's gonna come up over top of this and fold right back down into the base here and then after that we're gonna then use a darning needle and sew this together so it's like sandwiched in around the top of this uh, cuff area. So to start the next row you're gonna chain one and then coming into each stitch you're going to begin to single crochet back and forth and I want you to go back and forth for that four inches but of course you can uh, make your own judgments if you want to do more stitches or less it's up to you uh, but just make sure that it comes up and over and then back down and then hits the base area right inside the shoe right here. So I'll see you back here in just a moment. So now I'm done here the cuff area but before you sew this into position you need to do the tie first. So let's uh, move on to the tie and what I've done here with the tie is that I've went in here and when you see me do it before you notice that I would have lifted the cuff but that's because that's the it's a different uh, uh, video and all you just need to do is chain your 50 and then just weave it in on the outside here and therefore this can be tieable at the front and match your foot size here as well. So go and do that first and then what we're gonna do here is that we're gonna fasten off this yarn long enough that you can make it into a darning needle uh, in order to sew it permanently into position. So I'll see you back here in just a moment. So now it's time to create the tie. So I did a chain of 50 before and I noticed it was really tight so if you want to add extra chains you can do so and this is just woven into the interior and the exterior here underneath this cuff. So all you just need to do is just grab your yarn that matches the color and if you want to do a different color tie that's certainly your business and you can just uh, just chain it says to 50 and it says for all sizes but I would have done a little bit more if it were me. So just uh, chain and go all the way to 50 maybe back here in just a moment. Okay once you get your 50 done which I have I want to leave an extra lo little bit of string here. You're going to use that to your advantage and just trim it and then just pull that strand through the final loop and that'll lock that and pull it nice and tight. Okay, do the same to the other side just pull it nice and tight. So now what I want to do is I want to start on the front of the shoe and about uh, see just about hmm. So these are ties so this will just be what kind of makes it make or break for you. So you want the ties to come out from the center. So you're just gonna come up from the interior like this, like this. Okay and now what you wanna do is that you just wanna pull through and using the tie on the other side this piece over here. I want you to weave in and out now. So just coming in, coming out to the outside 
and just grabbing this strand. It's easier to grab this strand than it is to chain. The chains tend to uh, pull apart um, if you're just grabbing it by the chain and just pulling it through. So lift up the cuff, okay, and coming to the outside, okay, and what you wanna do is do is just weave in the outside. So just coming in like that and just grabbing that, that piece of string and just pull through. You wanna be strategic about this as well and just pull through. Okay, and then just moving along. So these are what's gonna customize it to your feet to hold it on if um, if it's not, uh, it's not enough for you. So again, just strategically placing them. You're not gonna see where these are because the cuff is gonna bury it. And then coming to the back. Okay, so I'm gonna pop them out just opposite, to just one stitch apart from each other. So you're gonna notice that this one I'm doing now is slightly, huh, it's almost the same size. Like that. So if it wasn't, all you just gotta do is let some slack go. And so you can just fold down the, the cuff. Fold in like this. And what you want to do is just trim these. So you just gotta just leave it a little bit there. Okay. And do the other one. Make sure it's pulled nice and tight before you do that. Again, if you wanna use a darning needle, if it makes you more happy, you can. And then you can just tie these. So what I would do is probably put them on your feet and then just tie them into the bow and therefore you'll know it's gonna fit you each and every time and you can, you should be able to slip your foot in and out without any issues at all and this would be how you would do a moccasin just like this. So now that your tie is done what you wanna do is that you just want to uh, fasten this off and you want to pull this yarn through just like that. So now you're gonna use this yarn here to sew it into position. So all you're just gonna do now is just fold it and just grab a darning needle. You will need um, um, a larger eye of a needle for this one because it is the pipsqueak yarn and just uh, feed it on through. It's not a big deal in order to do that. Just like that. So what we're gonna do here is that we're just going to fold this down on the inside of the slipper. Okay, so it's already attached on the outside just like you see here. So we're just gonna fold it in and what I want to do is that I just want to get that first one sewn in. So I'm just gonna fold it right over and then down in and I'm just gonna put the darning needle through the, the fluffy stuff here and right out to the outside of the fluffy here. Because you're using the same yarn you will not see it. So you're just gonna go back in through the outside here and then just make sure that you go through the fluff on the inside right down in there. So what this is gonna do it's gonna permanently attach this to the outside so in to the fluff again, staying toward the bottom of the, the moccasin and then back out to the fluff on the outside. So you don't even see where this is going in and out on the outside. So this is how you attach it and that's it for today's tutorial on um, being able to make your moccasin. These are really quite easy to make, um, really it's not a big deal and just continue to fold this in the inside and attach and I'll be back in just a moment just to show you the final look. So once you get all the way around you're just gonna create that and you're just gonna tie it. So you're just gonna just put it in again and just make sure that you get a nice secure um, foothold there. And then if you put the yarn through three times it'll never fall out on you. So just go one and then back in somewhere else but very close to it. This is two and back in again somewhere else but close to it and three. So therefore you can safely trim out that yarn now right to the base of the project and you will never see where you started and stopped. So now you just gotta shape and enjoy. So this is how you do these moccasins. They're really quite uh, easy to make, uh, really quite fun and you can see it's a permanent attach around the outside here and uh, these are machine washable as well so if you ever have a case to do so you can rely on that to do that as well. So until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. Have a great day and enjoy your new set of slippers.